I remember when, uh, when Columbine happened, I was in Japan as a missionary, and I heard the news, and I was just so upset, and uh, going through my day, disappointed, hurting for my country, hurting for those families, and uh, it got to be nighttime, and I, I got in front of my bathroom mirror, I can remember it, got my toothbrush in, in my mouth, and I looked at myself, and just somehow looking at my own eyes, and I don't know where it came from, I just burst with tears, and I fell on the ground crying for my country. Same thing happened with 9-11. And uh, I didn't cry this time, and I didn't want to. I don't know crying is good or bad. I just didn't want to do it. But I, I, I haven't really slept well for two nights. I've been up past 2 o'clock each night, and I'm just laying in bed. And, you know, I think I've got three little, four, three little girls, one little boy, and I think about those little kids. And I'm so proud of those teachers, principal running to the sound of gunfire, the school psychologist running another, teacher ran to it, principal and the other, the psychologist went down, the other teacher got back into a conference room, shot twice, the teachers who got in front of their kids, and then one room of kids, so proud of them, the shooter was standing in the doorway, the teacher blocked her kids, they killed the teacher, and many of the children got away because they ran towards the gunmen instead of cowering because when you cower, they, they get you. They ran towards the gunman, ran past him out in the hallway, and many of them escaped that way. What, you, you hate to see little kids, kindergartners have to be brave, right? Uh, so I changed my Christmas message. But it's still why I believe in Christmas, part two. Last week we looked at that uh, this book is rock solid. Anybody who tells you otherwise is fooling with you. And we looked at all the reasons why we can believe this account, what the early Christians uh, believed about Jesus Christ, about their faith. But things had to change because of the events out in Connecticut. 20 students were killed on Friday. Did you hear that in China? On the same day, 22 students were injured in a knife attack. Just two years ago, a madman injured 28 students in China with a knife attack. I was looking at the stats for school shootings. From about 95 on is when they started to happen. One a year, sometimes one every two years. 2012, we had three. Could be a statistical anomaly, I don't know, but from about 95, 96 is when we've been, it's become a regular part of our life. And if you feel like when you were little and you were growing up and there wasn't mass school shootings, it's because there wasn't. Something's changed. Something's broken in our culture. And all the jingle bells in the world are not going to do anything for that. I remember when Megumi first went to kindergarten, she came back and she knew the words for, for uh, Frosty the Snowman. Stephanie Pumpkin, Stephanie Pumpkin. <laughs> I said, I don't think that's the way it goes. Yes, that's what the teacher told us. I was uh, laying down in bed and, and it was hurting so bad for these little kids and I I twice kind of dozed off on Friday night, and I was awake again around, and each time I dreamt about, about the shootings and what happened, and I was awake at around 2 o'clock, and I thought Yumi wasn't breathing well or struggling a little bit, so I said, honey, are, are you okay? And she says, yeah, I was just dreaming. And she said, you scream. And I thought, oh, my poor wife is thinking about the same thing I am. And then she said, I scream for ice cream <laughs> and I thought I was blessed I thought my wife's living in a different world than I am right now it's a world with ice cream and that's a good place to be my my head hurt my chest and shoulders have been tight and I was I was blessed by that and I went to sleep 
happily very shortly thereafter. Matthew 4.16 says, The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. That's what Christmas is. Living in the land where the shadow of death covers us, and then a light shines from heaven because the Savior comes into our world. That's Christmas. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, Father, I, I love these people, and we love you, Lord. God, uh, if the darkness gets darker, I pray that the light of your truth and the light of your love will shine in us all the brighter. God, help us to be very patient with the, with the ones we love, with those around us. Fill us with uh, hearts of forgiveness, joy. God, make us good students so we learn to walk in peace and joy. And Father, I pray if the world gets darker, we don't react with anger or hostility, Lord, but that you do in us what only your Holy Spirit can do, Lord. Help us, Lord, to love those who hate us, to, to bring words of truth and kindness and mercy to those who hate you, Lord, to show a spirit of joy and peace for those who think they hate Christmas. We're asking you, Father, to reach deep down inside of us and change us from the way we are. And God, please have mercy on America. I just ask this morning, Lord, that if there's any lonely, angry, young men feeling like they're isolated, separated from society, Lord God. Father, you would just grab a hold of them and teach them, Lord, that you love them. And teach them what true rebellion is, Lord. Help them to rebel against the violence in our land. Help them to rebel against the cynicism. Help them to rebel, Lord, against selfishness and godlessness. And Father, I pray that they fall in love with goodness and fall in love with you. Lord, that this morning, wherever there's demonic influence, Lord, that you would powerfully shine your glory, Father, and you would send bold Christians to bring messages of your truth and love to every hurting and lonely and isolated person. And Father, we pray that you comfort those who are hurting in Connecticut, Lord, and Father, in our own little church here, those who have experienced death this last week, Lord, that you would comfort them and hold them close to your side. Father, we thank you for Christmas. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for being who you are. Pray this in your name. Last week, we saw how the world uses Christmas like a Band-Aid. You know, a Band-Aid can cover a, a wound and hide it from sight, but it doesn't do anything to heal what's on the inside. And I feel like sometimes that's how, that's how the world deals with Christmas and, and how futile that is to cover a, a, a deep wound with a Band-Aid. My husband died, but at least there's Frosty. I have constant chest pains. My, fo my folks, my dad died of chest pains. My grandpa died. It runs in the family. Thank goodness for flying reindeer. It means everything to me. I just lost my job, but we can still get together as family and sing the holiday classics, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. Does that make any sense to anybody? And we just hold on. Oh, you got to believe in the spirit of Christmas. Well, look what happened in Connecticut. You think flying reindeers and Christmas trees with flashing lights is going to do it? No. And yet, that's, that's what our culture is doing. It's just holding on to this. We've got we to gotta believe in this kind of green and red Christmas, and somehow it's going to make you feel better. Well, it makes you feel better because you're just closing your eyes. You're closing your eyes. 
It doesn't make any sense. It's like grasping at hope when it isn't there. It's a kind of self-delusion, trying to pretend like the world isn't messed up. The world uses Christmas to try and pretend that the world isn't messed up and they're, they're not messed up. Now, I also raised the question, what if Christians, last week, what if Christians were only taking part in a religious version of self-delusion? Maybe God being born in a manger is no more real than toy-making elves at the North Pole. And then we took a look at reasons to affirm the reliability of the New Testament text. This is an accurate reflection of what the first Christians believed. This is, this is what, how they saw Jesus Christ. This is how they saw their faith. But there's another advantage that Christmas from a Christian perspective has over Christmas that's only flashing lights and tinsel. Whereas Christmas, the way the world celebrates it, it's a tonic, it's snake oil to try and distract us so we can ignore how broken this place really is. You know what real Christmas does? Real Christmas looks right at the wickedness in the pain, in the brokenness of a fallen world. Real Christmas looks right at the teeth of the worst the world has to offer, and it says God sees, God cares, and that's why he came. That's why he came to do something about it. Christmas is when God saw the pain and the hurting and all the death and all the broken dreams, and he said, I'm going to shine my I'm coming in person to be Emmanuel, God with you. And that's our Christmas. Our Christmas doesn't try to have us hide from the world. Our Christmas says the world is broken and that's why we have Christmas. That's why God was born into our world to do something about it. And he says, I see your brokenness. I see your sin. Each one of you, each one of us, struggling with selfishness and anger and bitterness. And we're all broken people and the world has done things to us. And God looked down into it and said, I love you and I'm going to make you okay. And I'm going to bring you close to me. And that is Christmas. Where are you? Where's your pain today? Where's your hurting? Where's the guilt? The things you're ashamed of. Christmas is God saying, I see and I love you. Come to me. It's going to be okay. Not a Christmas that hides its eyes from the reality, but a Christmas that we have because of the painful reality. God with us, Emmanuel. God born to be alongside of us in the hospital room. God born to be alongside of us when we turn on the television and see that some horrible situation has happened. And it brings us to tears and we say, thank God that he sees and that he cares. We don't have to say, Merry, Merry Christmas, Jingle Bells. I just have to ignore this. I've got I to ignore it. We say, God is there because of the pain. Real Christmas takes place in a real world with real problems. And I love real Christmas because it means everything to me. In a moment, well, in a moment we're going to sing another Christmas song together as a church. But in the choir we'll be singing a, a Christmas cantata, King of Kings. Just let that percolate in your mind a little bit. King of Kings. What, is, what does that mean? King of Kings is born this Christmas Day, the very first lines in the repeating theme. Connecticut, Newville, Columbine, 9-11. The King of Kings is born this Christmas Day. Let that engage your heart and your mind. Is it true? And if so, if so, what does that mean for you? What does it mean to me that God came? The song goes on to say of Christ that he is the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and the Counselor, his name. He's wonderful, and he will reign forever. This is big. This is bigger than Black Friday. The birth of a king like this makes a difference in, guess what, in everything. It makes a difference in everything. It makes a difference when there's a gunman running through a school, and it makes a difference when you don't want to wash up the dishes and you say, I'm going to do it to bless my family. And it makes a difference when you wake up in the morning and say, this is the day that the Lord's given me. 
and I will rejoice, and I will be glad in it, and I'm going to determine to be a blessing to people around me and not a curse. God, I'm very tired. I want to love people today. Help me to love people the way they need to be loved so that they can see you. God, help me to make you real to a world that can't see you. Christmas matters in everything. King of kings, born, that matters. And then the song, song goes on to talk about all the fulfilled prophecy and the, the humble nature in which the king of kings was born. Think about that. King of the universe, born in a manger. And how Christ came to save us from ourselves, to save us from sinners. He's not the savior of perfect people. He's not the savior of super religious people. He's the savior of sinners. Have you sinned? Are you a sinner? Have you ever told a lie? Then you're a liar. Have you ever had lust in your heart? Then you're an adulterer. Have you ever hated somebody? Then the, Jesus Christ said you murdered them in your heart. Have you ever stood before God and said, I'm really messed up, God. Rest in this. He came to save you because he loves you. That's Christmas. That's Christmas. God sees. God loves. God cares. And he's not... We don't have to run around pretending like nothing's wrong. This world is wrong. That's why we have the cross. Amen? Amen. And that's the real Christmas tree because that's the one he came for. Listen for the message in our cantata today of the angel to the shepherds. Fear not. Because if you've been watching too much CNN, you might be afraid. Fear not because you just got that call from the doctor you didn't want. Fear not because you are so lonely and nobody seems to understand you and you feel like you're handling this life alone. Fear not. For behold, look, I'm bringing you good tidings of great joy. And this is for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. You've got a hero. You've got a Savior. You have someone who cares who came for you and is reaching out to you and saying, come with me. And this is a true story, the true story of Christmas, the one that brings hope, peace, and joy. And it has nothing to do with reindeer with shiny noses or a snowman in a magic hat. This is beautiful, and it's good, and it changes everything. Let's sing. Let's sing together as a congregation now, joy to the world. And then after that, I want you, if you're not in the choir, I want you to listen. Listen real, listen real well to the songs, that, the words that we're singing. And if you're on the choir, sing joyfully because this is a message that means everything. Foundation Bible Church, inconveniently located two blocks northwest of the Jamesville Athletic Club.